Well, hey there, boys and girls. Here's a video I tried to bring you yesterday, but the key, the computer was being crazy. So uh, you have to watch it today while I stand probably over there and look awkward with my not very much voice. So this lecture is going to be about upwellings and downwellings in the ocean. First things first, here's a pretty sweet animation. Let's see if I can pull it up here. Here it is. This came right out of the book. Uh, that link there, I'll show it again. It's a short link. You just type in those things exactly. It will bring you to this animation. What I really like about this one is you can actually see the different wind areas and use that to show you how the currents fit in. You can see how these currents are really driven by the wind. But it's really nice because it can also show you the equatorial currents. It can show you the high latitude currents. It can show you all the currents. And this is basically what your map should have going on it, except they really skimped out on the Svedrup over here. And the Gulf Stream, uh, yours is probably way better. And I guarantee that your East Australian current is not just a little line going down here that looks like part of a gyre. No, your East Australian current's probably doing all kinds of crazy stuff, just like it should. Again, here's that link. This is, I believe the uh, capital O. It looks like it might be a number zero, but I believe it's capital O. Little case X. Make sure you type that in exactly. Now would be a good time to write it down. Link also in the description for when you watch this later. So when the water goes around to those gyres, due to all the force and the spinning, it actually causes the water to pile up on top, just like they're showing here, and make this little, make this little raised sea surface, make this hill. It tends to be a little off-center, like they're showing you down in this diagram. See, that's the center of the gyre, but you notice it's not really in the center. And that whole uh, spinning and mounting is then compounded by the fact that the Earth is then spinning. So you can imagine what this does with our satellite bathymetry, probably throws it all off and crazy. But as a result, because you've made this hill, the water is going to flow down the sides, uh, just like this here, because, you know, gravity's a thing. So you have this water where it's piled up in the middle, and then it's just sloughing off the sides. That whole uh, flow is called geostrophic flow. That's a key term you need to know. Geostrophic flow, that whole idea that the water piles up and then <laughs> plops on off to the sides. And don't forget, it's because of Willy. Now, because all that water is piled up there, it makes a large amount of, you know, weight because, you know, you have all this stuff right here that is heavy. So as a result, the water is going to move, look at the arrow, uh, down, just like the arrow shows, and that's going to cause areas of lower productivity. This water moving down, we call that downwelling. The reason why it's causing lower productivity is because it's taking any of the nutrients that would be up here in the water column, and it drags them down with it. So it's depriving the surface water of nutrients so that the uh, living things can't, you know, live so good. And of course, if there's downwelling, then we got to have some upwelling. These are areas where you have some kind of divergence on the surface. You can see right here, the arrows pushing off to the side, so we've got this void right here where there used to be water, it kind of has water, but it's, it's created this gap, not, you know, you're not going to see a hole in the water, but it's created this area of lower pressure in the water at least. And because that water moving out has a lot of hydrogen bonding to the water below it, which gives the water good cohesion, so it sticks to itself, it's going to cause the water to get pulled up just like they're showing you right here. Oh yeah, that looks very bad. <clears throat> so the water comes up, that's actually going to increase productivity at the surface because it's bringing all this water from the muck and the gook below and that muck and gook below is very nutrient risk rich because remember that's all those dead bodies falling little uh, trick of the trade anytime you hear like a biologist or somebody talking about nutrients those are dead bodies so just remember those biogenous sediment parts that we were looking at before all the soft parts inside there when they died and are decomposing those become the nutrients to feed those upper level waters. So for those of you that are like, yeah, 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 just get to the part where you answer our lab. This is kind of it, but you know, you're not done yet. Because there's these coastal zones, and in the continental margins, specifically the continental shelf, it's much, much more shallow than before. So if you look at your northerly wind, guess coming from the north going to the south, you see these areas where we have what's called Ekman flow, where the water moves in towards the coast. So anytime you see the water moving towards the coast on the surface, when it runs up against the coast, it's going to have to downwell. There it is, downwelling. Oh, that's great, isn't it? So that's your downwelling. 
So you have the water moving away from the coast here. It creates this void right here. And we know what happens when there's a void that has to be filled, so there's going to be upwelling. The water creeps on up the slope, sort of like opposite of the turbidity current almost, and that is going to have upwelling in those coastal areas. So on your maps, make sure you show me areas of upwelling and downwelling. Don't forget, in the middle of your gyres, you always have that downwelling, right, where that water piled up and pushes down. But then look in here. So you've got this area over off the coast of California where the water is moving in towards the coast. So you have to apply your upwellings and downwellings based on that Ekman flow as well. So it's very exciting. So go ahead and grab back out your maps. Use and D's all over the place. Use a different color from the colors that you used before so they stand out distinctly. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't be a willy.